So I'm, I'm, I'm starting a brand new series today called Quarantine Confessions. Quarantine, oh, I got some confessions today. Uh, I hope this is a good thing. I hope this is a good thing. Um, you know, for all of us on around March 15th or March 13th, man, our lives changed drastically. Uh, we live in a very free society, open. Everything is open. Everything is, we're used to that. That's all we know. And in a moment, I mean overnight, things changed overnight. What, what, things that we're used to watching on TV and seeing other countries go through. Like there are countries we see wearing masks and we say, oh, that's what they do over there. But it's different when you see it hit home, right? Things changed. And we were told we got to quarantine for two weeks. And that if we can quarantine for two weeks, we can help flatten the curve. We've been introduced to all these new terms that I had no clue what they meant. Now I feel like I, feel like I could give a speech on all these terms. <laughs> I got like, I'm intimately aware with all these terms. We quarantined for two weeks. And I thought, man, it's just two weeks. We can do two weeks. Can we do two weeks? I thought, man, we got two weeks. Two weeks has now been over two months. And through this quarantine, I'm telling you, we're, we're learning a lot. We're learning a lot. And, and first of all, there's things about myself that I've learned through the quarantine. There's things about my family. Anybody else? Things about my family that I'm learning through the quarantine. You know, some good, some bad. Some things that God has revealed to me that I need to fix. Anybody else? This is called quarantine confession. So we're all going to be confessing. Anybody ready to confess some stuff today? I, in fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and confess right now. I, whoever's watching online right now, I just want you in the comments section. Just go ahead and confess something that you need to confess. <laughs> right? So, Pastor, are you being serious? Yeah, I'm being serious. We're all going to make some confessions today. Right? So if there's something you need to confess, hey, you know, I, I realized that I was taking my family for granted. And this quarantine has helped me to appreciate it. Whatever that is, whatever that is, go ahead and use the comment section. Put that in there. And then I've got a verse for you in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. The Bible says, he who conceals his transgressions will not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. I want you all to read it with me. Those that are watching at home right now, I want you to read this verse with me, all of us together. Proverbs 28, verse 13. You have the leaders that are here today, let's read this together. He who conceals his transgressions. In other words, his sin, his iniquity. Sin, that, that's an important word, sin. The person who hides his sin, who takes his sin and tries to bury it, where nobody can find it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this stuff in a closet. I'm going to tuck it away for a little bit. Maybe if it is out of sight, maybe it can get out of my mind. There, there's this idea that somehow we can hide it and we don't have to deal with it. Now, but the Bible says the person who does that will never prosper. They will never succeed. They will never do well. You will never get ahead by hiding your sin, hiding your transgressions. The Bible actually says it's the person who confesses. Not just confess. This is an important element too. It's the one who forsakes their sin. So I'm going to confess my sin. Watch this. But I'm going to forsake that sin. And the Bible says that when you actually confess it, when you forsake it, that there you find compassion. Compassion. Oh, man, this is going to be such a good day today. I'm so excited you're tuned in right now. So excited you're watching. You're doing church at home with us. I want to preach a message simply entitled, Here It Is. Somebody say, Here It Is. Here it is. Here it is. It's not all good, but here it is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not proud of it all, but here it is, right? When we come before God, right, we'd love to clean everything up to present to him something good. But the truth is we got nothing. We just come before God and we say, hey, Father, here it is. Can you love me like this? And the answer is always yes. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this weekend. Thank you for this service. Thank you for this opportunity, God, just to 
do church online, to be connected with our entire body, God. Lord, I, I miss these folks so much. I, I am dying inside, God, to be gathered again. And I know that that day is quickly, quickly approaching, God. But right now we are gathered online. We're still gathered. We're not separated and we're not distanced. We're, co we're, we're connected right now, heart to heart, soul to soul, spirit to spirit, God. Thank you for technology. Thank you for the ability to do church online, God. And thank you, God, for the comeback. It's already in the works, God, as we get back to the new normal and doing church together, God. Give us wisdom as we move forward, God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So quarantine confessions, quarantine confessions. I, I'm just telling you, I've learned a lot in the last two months. I've, I've learned things that I never even wanted to know, like the distance that, that droplets of, of, of uh, water and stuff from your lungs can travel. I, I don't know if, if somebody sneezes around me and you don't do it in your arm, we're going to have a serious problem. Because now I know, I know how that stuff travels. Say amen, somebody. I, I know things that I never even wanted to know, things that I didn't even care to know, right? We're all familiar with new terms, uh, things we call like social distancing and flattening the curve. I, I now know how to read a graph. Anybody else? I can read a graph. I can, I can understand what's going on. And during this time of quarantine, man, I've learned a lot. I've, and, and, and actually, it was, it was the first week of this entire thing. I created a list, and I started to write down everything that I believe that God was trying to show me even in quarantine. We, we really, it's important that you remain introspective, that you're always open to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and to grow you, especially when things are super uncomfortable and not the way you like them. So around week one of this whole thing in March, when we begin to, uh, you know, quarantine and stay at home and do all this, I started to write down just the things that I was learning. One of the things God showed me, just I'm confessing this, is that I needed to spend more time with my family. One of the things. Anybody else, if that's you, just, just put that in the notes. Or if that's you, you can like this right now so, so we know that's you. That's how you can respond and give some feedback. But one of the things I realized is that I needed to spend more time with my family. I can't tell you how awesome it has been to sit around a table and just to eat dinner. I, I had taken that for granted. That's the way I was raised. That's the way I, I, I grew up, sitting around a dinner table, having conversation, looking people in the eye, talking about your day and what you've done. And, and so I can tell you, for the last two months, we've been doing a lot of that, a lot of that. Caroline and I, in fact, for the first time, actually ate dinner in a restaurant in this last week, and it was really, really crazy. But what I've learned is I really value now that time being at home. That time, I really value now eating at home. And I realize, man, my, my wife can cook, praise God. She got an anointing that I didn't even, I, I had forgotten about it, praise God. But the anointing is back, and we're eating good, and I'm gaining weight. There's a confession. Anybody want to confess? You done gained some weight during quarantine? Say amen, somebody, if you know that's you. Here's the other thing, force rest. Force rest. I am the type of person that does not rest well. I, I, I can be identified as a workaholic. My mind doesn't ever want to shift off. I'm always thinking, always strategizing, always planning, always thinking of the next message, the next series, the next service, the next everything. And what this thing has done, it's helped me to rest because I have been forced to rest. God clearly lays out a design for us that we are to work, 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 but we are to rest. Amen, anybody? And so through this thing, just a confession that I'm learning how to rest better. It was forced rest, but I'm getting better at it. Then there's this thing called GSD. Does anybody know what GSD stands for? GSD is getting Stuff done. See, that's the Christian version. You know what I'm saying? We're just getting stuff done during this quarantine. And I'm not going to elaborate on that. But there's just been projects. It's confession time. There have been projects that my wife's been asking me to do for three decades. Now, I'm sorry, maybe like three years, a long time. And I have not done them yet. But I'm telling you, I got all the projects done just about in Jesus' name through this quarantine. Yeah, give God praise for that. That is amazing. 
right? Some of you are learning through this quarantine now that your kid's doing school at home, right? It's amazing how when, when we started doing school at home, spanking is now going back into schools. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't spank kids in school, but now, now your bad kids are home. Now you spanking them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, this quarantine, it's revealing a lot. One of the things it's revealing is the teachers weren't the problem. Oh, I feel like preaching right about what one of the things you're beginning to understand is it wasn't the teachers. It wasn't the principals. It it was not the administrators. It was your bad, stinking kids. And now that you got them and you're raising them and you're teaching them eight hours a day, you done figure that out. It's just confession time. Here's, here's one thing that I've learned through this whole thing is I have a brand new, fresh appreciation for the church. I, I, I mean, I mean, listen, I have always, always loved the house of God. But, but let, me, let me explain it like this first. My first love is God. There, there is a problem if you fall in love with the church more than you fall in love with God. You have to first fall in love. It's okay to love the church. God loves the church, right? The church is, is God's idea. But first, primarily, you have to love God. That's why, that's why even though we have not been physically meeting, for all of us who love God, our position and condition in Christ has not changed. Why? Because we weren't just in love with the aspects of church. We were in love with Jesus Christ and you can never distance yourself from him. There's no way anybody could ever distance you from Christ. And so that's the beauty. I love God. Watch this. But I also love God's house. I mean, I love God's house because I love God's people. And I will never again, ever in my entire life, I pray that this stays with us. I can tell you, and people take it for granted. They say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because on average, people will only attend church about 50% of the time. Hello? We still here? Everybody, everybody, everything working? Still, still on? We still getting this? 50% of the church will only attend, or, or, or 100% of the people only attend 50% of the time. And I'm just telling you. That's, that's, I think what we have there is a dynamic where we've taken the church for granted. And there's some aspects where I have taken the church for granted. It's confession time. And I'm just telling you, I will never take the church for granted again. I have so long for the moment where we're all worshiping back together again. And I love church online. I love what God's doing during this time. But I'm telling you, there's something better than even church online. And that's all of us being gathered together, worshiping together. This word quarantine, it's, it's an interesting word. Let me, let me define it to you. To quarantine a person or a family means to impose isolation of that individual or that family. It's what it literally means to quarantine. And I'm going to confess some things about quarantine. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make just a couple confessions today. Because, because when you put your family together 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I wish I could see you right now so I could understand the way you're looking at me. When, when you see, see, work is good because I get to leave and then I get to look forward to seeing you when I get home. But when you've been together nonstop, for 24 hours, 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, 30 days, 31 days, when you're constantly together, there are some things that come out that you didn't even know was there. How many know absence makes the heart grow fonder? Uh, how many need some absence? Say amen, somebody. Need, need some absence from your kids. I know you can't say amen. That's all right. Uh, you need some absence. But during this quarantine, I just want to start this off with some confessions. I'm going to make the first confessions. And, 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 and this is hard for me, but I'm going to do it anyways. Like uh, during this quarantine, uh, I said a cuss word. And I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I'm not happy about it. I'm not excited about it. I'm not proud of it. But I'm just going to confess. This is, this is confessions from quarantine. I said a cuss word, a, a, a word, words, uh, word, words, words. Uh, uh, See, I feel like you're looking at me self-righteous, but I can't tell because I can't see you. But I have this idea like you're giving me the stink eye right now. And just um, if you're watching right now and you love Jesus but you cuss a little, just raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. It, like I do love Jesus. I've just been known to cuss a little. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the truth is I don't know if, I, I don't know if you knew this or not. 
But sin is an issue for all of us. Sin's not just an issue for the people. Sin's an issue for the pastor. Sin's, sin's an issue for leaders. Sin's an issue for everybody. Everybody struggles with sin. Maybe you're watching right now and you say, I can't believe it. I can't believe the pastor said a cuss word. There, no, not word, words. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say one. I said multiple. And can I tell you something? Watch this. When it relates to sin, I don't love my sin. I hate my sin. I hate when I sin. I hate, but the truth is that all of us, all of us struggle. And it is something when people that we think don't ever sin, it's, it's, there's eye-opening when we realize, hold on. They're dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with. They're in court. See, the enemy has this ability to isolate us in our homes and make us think that our home is the only one that's dysfunctional. Listen to me. We all put the dis in dysfunctional. Come on and say amen, somebody. We're all putting the dis in dysfunction, every single one of us. I remember, I'm sorry, Mom, I apologize in advance for what I'm about to say. I remember the first time I ever heard my mom cuss. I grew up in a home, I'm just telling you, where cussing wasn't normal. Nobody cussed. I never grew up saying cuss words. My mom would have knocked your teeth right out, like nobody cussed in my house growing up. No, nobody, nobody. And I remember the first time I heard my mom say a cuss word. Uh, the dog had, I didn't walk the dog. I was supposed to walk the dog. I didn't walk the dog. So you can imagine what happened. And when mom found it, she just lost it. And she said a word that I've never heard come out of her mouth. And when she said it, I, my jaw dropped. I could not believe. Because for the first time I realized, hold on, mom's just like me. Mom struggles with getting the best of her emotions just like me. I, I remember when I first heard my grandfather say a cuss word. Anybody remember these moments? I, I know some of you grew up in very, very unhealthy homes where there was always cussing and swearing and yelling. And I'm just telling you, that's not healthy. That's not normal. I didn't grow up like that, right? If, if you grew up like that, God can redeem it, fix it, and help you to have a healthier home. I'm just telling you, the home I grew up in wasn't like that. And my grandfather was a pastor. He's with the Lord now, but he was a pastor over 40 years of his life. I remember the first time I ever heard him cuss. First time. When he said it, it was like the air got sucked out of the room. And I could not believe, I, I honestly remember, I was a kid, I was a teenager, but I literally remember crying when I heard him say it. Crying. Because in my mind, there was this idea that my grandfather didn't struggle with the same things that everybody else. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help every single person who's watching. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says this. Everyone, somebody say everyone, everyone has sin. How, how many? The Bible says everybody. It, no, the Bible says we all, every single one of us, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Come on, there it is. We, we, we all Every single one of us. You, you want to know? Like, like, here it is. Like, confession time, here it is. We all have sin issues. Every single one of us. We all, we all got things we're struggling with. Every, and, and, and here's what the Bible says, that if we try to hide it, we're not going to prosper. But if we will confess it, that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I, I'm just telling you right now, like, if you think, that your salvation is dependent on your ability to be perfect, that I'm telling you, nobody's going to heaven. I'm going to say it one more time because I'm not so sure everybody heard me. If your salvation is dependent upon your ability, watch this, to be perfect, your own ability to keep you perfect, then listen to what I'm about to say. Ain't nobody going to heaven. But I'm so thankful that my salvation is not dependent upon my ability to be perfect, but my salvation is dependent on God's ability to be perfect. And Jesus Christ is perfect. Can I tell you, sin is a problem. Sin, sin brings death. Sin brings all kinds of garbage into our life. Sin is a huge problem. Watch this. Jesus solved the problem. <laughs> sin is a problem. Jesus came, lived a perfect life, went to the cross, paid the price for our sin. And now I tell you, Jesus took care of the sin 
problem. Proverbs 20, verse 13. He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. That word conceal, if you look at it, that word conceal means to cover. To cover something. To hide it. To hide it. When I was a kid, we used to play a game called hide and go seek. Anybody play that game? It's, it's kind of like a rite of passage. You have to play that game as a kid. Hide and go seek. There's something about that game that we absolutely love. I can remember as a kid loving the game of hide and go seek. You want to know why we love hide and go seek? Because there is something in our fallen human sinful nature that wants to hide. I'm not trying to get all philosophical. I'm, I'm just telling you there's something in all of us that enjoys hiding. Play hide and go seek. Uh, when, whenever I would hide, there's always that one go-to spot, right, that nobody knows. We all, like, in the house, in the house, we've, we've all got that one spot. Does anybody remember that one spot growing up? Like, man, nobody knows about this spot. So if I can just get to this spot, I can stay right there. Nobody will find me. And you would sit there and you would hide. We've all got that one spot. We, we, we've all got that one closet or that one space that we, when, whenever it's time to hide, we jump into that and we think as long as I stay here, can I tell you something? We still play in hide and go seek as adults. We just play differently. The truth is we're still doing hide and seek. We're doing hide and seek with God. We're trying to do hide and seek with our families. And we still got a couple spots that we run to when things get tough or when things get hard or when temptation is severe. There's still some things that we try to go and hide and jump into, right, and, and get away from everybody else. The, the challenge is one day God is going to find your hiding spot. Uh, he already knows your hiding spot. One day God is going to open the closet where you're hiding. God is going to find you wherever you are. He's going to open the door. And in that moment, can I tell you something? It would be much better for you if you had confessed before he opened the door than to wait till he opens the door and then try to confess. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, watch this. Nothing in all the world can be hidden from God. Everything is clear and lies open before him. And to him, we must explain the way we have lived. There is going to be a moment where we are all going to stand before God and we're going to explain. Is anybody looking forward to that moment? Right? We are going to stand before God and, and, and you're going to explain your life. You're going to explain it. So, some of you watching right now, you're like, oh, I can't wait because I'm going to explain that. I got, let me tell you, you got some explaining to do. You're going to stand before God. And if you're here today and you're like, man, I, well, when that happens, I'm just going to see God. What had happened was uh, this, that, and the other. I didn't really want to do this, that, and the other. But see what happened. I'm telling you that when I stand before God, I'm not going to say nothing. When, when my life is being portrayed and all, and it's going to take some time to get through all my stuff. I know some of y'all, y'all got a little a short reel, you know, going to be like, what, a 60-second video? Baby, get a chair and get something to eat because it's going to take time to get through all my stuff. But when when it all gets done, I ain't going to be sweating. I ain't going to be doing nothing. I'm going to reserve my right to remain silent. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus Christ because I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus covers all my sin, all my shame, all my past, all my stuff, all my iniquities, all my failures are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Anybody thankful for the blood? Proverbs 15, verse 3, the Lord's eyes see everything. We've got this idea like we're keeping stuff hidden from God. But no, I'm telling you, the Bible says his eyes, man, they see everything. He's watching evil and good people. Jeremiah 23, 24 says it like this. No one can hide so that I can't see him, says God. I feel, I feel Heaven and the earth declares the Lord. Do you recognize that concealment from God is idiocy? It is, it is utterly ridiculous. It is complete nonsense. 
It is stupidity at the highest level, this idea that what you do on this earth is not seen by God. He sees everything. And yet in the human heart, there is this idea that I can hide some stuff from God where he won't see it. We see it in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve sin. What is the first thing they do? They hide. The very next generation, Cain kills Abel, thinking that he's going to get away with murder. You can't hide from God. You get into the New Testament, you have Ananias and Sapphira who sold a piece of land and were trying to act like they were given everything when the truth was they were holding some back. And you might be able to fool people, but you cannot fool God. And God knew. This is where this verse says, he who conceals his sin, he will not prosper. But the Bible says, he who confesses and forsakes it will find compassion. Can I tell you, it is always better to confess than it is to get caught. Hmm. I'm doing my best to get this in 60 seconds. I'm not making any problem. I mean, 60 minutes. This is supposed to be a 60-minute service. I'm going to do my best. I'm just telling you, it is always better to confess than it is to get caught. They both can work a similar outcome But it's better when there is confession. There is something disingenuous about being caught and then being sorry. Does that make sense? Sometimes when you get caught, it's not that you're sorry that you did it. It's sorry that you did it and weren't able to. (laughs) It's always better when there is confession. There's something about a clear conscience when we come before God and we just empty everything, not waiting for him to catch us, but coming to him and confessing. I'm going to give you a scripture today that's going to blow your mind. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is a text, man, that you can glean on for, for the rest of this week. This is the message of God's promised revelation, which, which we have heard from him and now announce to you that God is light. He's holy. His message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness. And in him there is no darkness at all, no sin, no wickedness, no imperfection. And if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness of sin, we lie. We lie. We don't practice the truth. But if we really walk in the light, that is, live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God, as he himself is in the light, we have true, great word here, unbroken fellowship with one another. God with us, us with God. Watch this. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from, mm, good word, all sin. Watch this. By erasing the stain of sin but watch this and keeping us cleansed it's not that God just erased your sin but he's keeping you cleansed religion has taught that you do that no God does that keeping us cleansed from sin and all its forms and manifestations. Verse 8, if we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude ourselves and the truth is not in us. His word does not live in our hearts. But, verse 9, if we freely admit we have sin and confess our sins, he is faithful and just. He is true to his own nature and his promises. And he will forgive our sins and cleanse us, oh, I love this, continually. There's a word for somebody. That God will cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. Now, here it is. Like you want to know, you don't know where we're going with this whole thing. Here it is. You have to make a choice. Am I going to cover it or am I going to confess it? Every single person who's watching today, you just have a choice. Like quarantine confessions, like somebody confess, somebody get real with God right now. In the last two months that there's been some, you know why in the last two months, because everybody's been quarantined, do you know domestic violence has increased in the last two months? 
Do you know that child abuse has increased in the last two months? Do you know that pornography use has increased in the last two months? No, I'm telling you, through the quarantine, we need to make some confessions to God. We need, we need to confess. And you have to make up your mind. Am I going to cover it or am I going to confess it? In Exodus chapter 2, Moses, at the age of 40, he knows he's a Hebrew. He was raised in an Egyptian home, and he walks out one day, and he sees an Egyptian beating on one of his Hebrew brothers, and he loses it, and he acts impetuously, and he responds, and he puts his hands on that Egyptian, and he kills it. The Bible said, literally, if you read it, the Bible says he looked right, and he looked left, and he jumped on the mat. Can I tell you something real quick? If you got to look around before you do it, you probably shouldn't do it. Can I get a good amen from anybody? <laughs> if you got to do a look around, just probably. Anything you've got to hide to do. So how do I know, Pastor? If you got to hide, it ain't right. Moses looks around. He thinks nobody's watching. He kills that Egyptian. Watch this. And then he covers him in the sand how many of us got that same mentality that I can just take this and I can bury it in the sand and I can cover all this stuff over and nobody is going to find it a lot of us are operating with that mentality and I'm telling you that if you conceal it God is going to reveal it and the reason why he reveals it is not not because he's he's uh, not because he doesn't love you. What actually it is an act of love. The best thing that can happen to somebody who is hiding sin is for them to get caught. What, what I'm saying to you is that the catching is actually compassion. It is, it is compassion for you to get caught. Some of you have been caught by God. He, he's caught you and, and you were upset. You were upset. Why did you expose me? The exposing is an act of love. Because God says, I love you too much to leave you where you are. I love you too much to leave you broken and in your sin and stuck and bound and addicted and hurting and broken. I love you too much. I have to reveal it. Right? Here's why. Because if you conceal it, God will reveal it. But if you reveal it, God will heal it. Come on, somebody. God says, the reason why I'm going to expose it is because I want to heal Every broken air. Some of us, we're hiding the stuff that God wants to heal. And confession, watch this, confession brings compassion. Here's what you need to understand about God. And maybe some of you are here today and you're like, no, I've tried that confession thing before. And maybe you confessed to somebody you loved and when you did, you didn't find grace and you didn't find, you know, forgiveness and you didn't find mercy. And, and what that does, it trains your heart to continue to hide when you confess and you don't get grace, it, it programs our brain. Don't ever be real with that person. Don't ever be honest with that person because when I do, they can't handle it. Right? Some of, us, some of us are mad because people have hidden things from us. But, but maybe, perhaps sometimes, the reason they've hid it is because they don't trust your grace. They don't trust that there can be real compassion and grace when they come to you. Let me tell you something. When you come to God and you confess, you always find comp compassion. Another verse of Scripture, Exodus 33. I'll close with this. Y'all come on up. Exodus 33, 31 chapters later. Moses says to God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. <laughs> show me your glory. And God says to Moses, Moses you can't handle my glory. <laughs> if I passed before you and you saw me, you would fall dead. The holiness, my purity, all that I am, my power, my strength, you can't, you, you just could not handle it. But here's what he tells Moses. He says, Moses, there's a rock that you can stand on. 
You can stand on that rock and there's this little indention in the side of the, the cliff and you can get into the cleft of the rock. And God says, I'll just put my hand over you and I'll cover you. You can't see my face, but God says, I'll let you see the back. I will pass over you. And, all, and that's exactly what happens. Moses stands on the rock and hides in the cleft. And God puts his hand over Moses and he walks by his favor. His grace, his love, his righteousness, goodness, all pass it. Can I tell you something? There's still a rock you can stand on. His name is Jesus Christ. There's still a place you can, you can find safety. You can stand in Jesus Christ. And the moment you get in Christ, watch this. God will cover you. Some of you are so busy covering yourself. Watch this. Stop trying to cover yourself. Confess yourself to God. Then watch this. When you stop hiding and you confess, God will hide you in his hand. He who conceals his sin will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes him will find compassion. God, I pray for the person who's watching right now who's bought the lie that I just keep hiding. I just keep hiding this stuff. God, I pray that you would just destroy that, that thought, that idea, that we can continue to hide things from you, God, that we would recognize today that if we hide it, we'll never prosper. But if we confess it and forsake it, we will find compassion. Hey, thanks for watching. If this video was a blessing to you, take two seconds and click that like button. Share your comments with us. If the Word of God is making an impact in your life, we want to hear about it. So email us at praisegod at thelakeside.church. We're always encouraged to hear how the Word of God is making an impact in your life. One last thing subscribe to our channel that way you never have to miss a thing it takes literally seconds so subscribe before you go we love you guys thanks for watching